Hey guys, what I'd like to do in this video is show you how you can replace the internal hard drive of your Sony PlayStation 4 and then reinstall the operating system. Now I'll be using my original white PS4 and this replacement hard drive here to walk you through the steps that I'll be doing to upgrade this PlayStation 4. But before we do that, I just want to summarize the whole process and just talk about upgrading the Sony PS4 in general. Now this is a follow-up video. I did a video about five or six weeks ago where I talked about my PS4 hard drive dying and the replacement hard drive was actually sent just after that, but I've been doing other things. But the video was well received. I got a lot of new subscribers. I got a lot of views and a lot of comments. And it's clear from the comments that there's a lot of different things that can happen to a Sony PlayStation 4 that can stop it from working correctly. Some of these issues are software related and some are hardware related. Now, I will say that most hardware issues are probably related to the hard drive. You can get power issues and memory issues, etc. but the hard drive is probably the most common point of failure in a Sony PlayStation 4. But there are a lot of software issues that can arise as well. And I would say that if you've got any problems with your Sony PlayStation 4, always try and put it into safe mode first. This will probably resolve most of the issues that you have with a software update going wrong or a firmware issue or even a problem with your hard drive. Put it into safe mode, see if you can fix the problem first with doing this before you rush out there and spend any money on a replacement hard drive. Please go through all the steps detailed on this page, which I will leave a link down below so you can check it out and try and get it resolved by going through the safe mode process. That's what I would recommend. But for some of you, you will have to do an upgrade and this is the guide. So again, I'll save all of these, I'll link to all of these pages here. I'll save them all and add them to, to the description here so you can see it. Now the first step here of replacing the internal hard drive, the first step in this guide is to back up your data. Back up, back up all the information on your hard drive, all your games and all your saved data. So it's saying to back up data to an external storage device and back up saved data to online storage. Now, of course, I can't do that. I don't have the original drive. It wasn't working, so I was not able to back up anything. I had lost everything. So that, that's unfortunately not something I can show you in this video. But I do encourage you to do this if you're simply replacing a drive that is working. So if you're upgrading to an SSD for performance or you're upgrading to another hard drive, a mechanical hard drive for additional storage, maybe one terabyte to four terabyte, then you want to follow this guide and make sure you back up all your data. It will make your life a lot easier. But what I'll be doing in this video is simply replacing the hard drive. And this is actually one of the easiest steps of this whole process. It's really easy to just take off the casing and then just, you know, unscrew the, the hard drive caddy and then put in your new hard drive. Now I'll show you this in a bit, but it is easy, but please be aware that I've got the original PS4, but obviously you've got the PS4 Slim and the PS4 uh, Pro as well. So there's a few different models there and the, the steps of getting the casing off is slightly different between the models, but they're all very similar. There's really not a massive amount of difference as far as um, you know changing the hard drive in a PlayStation 4. But obviously you should refer to the guides on the Sony website and refer to the model which you've got, be it the original, the Slim or the Pro. Now once you've replaced the hard drive, what we'll be doing is updating the software. So you can see here, this is the latest one at the time of recording. I was going to say the time of writing. At the time of recording, PS4 system software update 7.51, May the 27th, 2020. Make sure you've got the latest version. You can upgrade to an older version if you've downloaded the file already, but it just makes sense to download the latest version. So what you do is you download this file and then you follow this guide. And this guide walks you through the whole process where you have to format your USB drive in FAT32, and then you create a folder called PS4 and then another file, another folder, sorry, called upgrade. So it'll be PS4 slash upgrade slash the file, the PS4 upgrade file, this file that you download here. And I've done this step already. I've uh, attached my USB hard drive. I've formatted the drive to FAT32 and you can see it here. I've got uh, the USB drive, PS4, update, and then inside that is the update file. And it's only about one gigabyte in size. It's not large. So a two gigabyte uh, USB flash drive will do the job here. So it's really not difficult. You just have to download it and make sure it's in that, um, you know, that directory structure, PS4 update, and then the download file. And the download file is of course coming from this page. So now that you've got an overall view, hopefully you've got a good uh, overview as to what we're going to be doing in this video. Let's say uh, upgrade the PS4. 
So I've taken the USB drive out of my computer, but before I start installing the operating system, I have to put the new hard drive into the PS4. And with the original PS4, this is painfully easy. All you have to do is do that. That's it. That's how you take off the casing of the Sony PS4. It really is that easy. You just kind of pull it back and it will just pop out. Now, I have the caddy out already. This is a hard drive caddy and your hard drive will sit inside that. But previously this was inside, but I took it out obviously because I sent my hard drive back and it just sits in inside like that. It's kind of upside down if you see it, the, 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 the casings at the top. And it, all you do is if, if you're replacing a hard drive that's in there already, and I showed you this in the last video, all you do is just slide it out like that. Just slide it out and your, your hard drive caddy will come out. There's only one screw and then it slides out. It is that easy. So before I actually replace the hard drive, I need to get it out the box. So this is my replacement hard drive, the Seagate two terabyte Firecuda. And if I jump over to my overhead camera, you can see that, yeah, it's a standard 2.5 inch hard drive and we've got the holes around the side so that we can connect this to the caddy and then slide it into the PS4. So these black screws were originally on the caddy to secure the old hard drive and I've simply taken them out so that I can secure this. And we do know that in order to connect the hard drive to the caddy and then the caddy to the PS4, we do it with the metal casing at the top so that we can then secure it with this screw like that. But do we connect the hard drive like this or do we spin it around and connect it like that? Now, it's very easy to determine. So if you're unsure, just check inside your hard drive and you can see the hard drive connection ports and you can see that there's a, a long part and then there's a thin part and simply line it up, line it up like that and then you can secure it and slide it in. It's that easy. So all we have to do now, let me take it off, is secure the hard drive to the caddy. So I've secured the hard drive to the hard drive caddy and this is the easy part. All you have to do is take the caddy, slide it in, I'll click into place and you'll see the holes will align here. And simply put the screw back there and then we'll tighten it up like so. Get in there. And that's it. Once it's tightened up, you're done. That's it. All you have to do now is take the casing like that, and you just take it in like this, line it up, and then click into place. That's it. The hard drive has now been replaced. It's now inside the Sony PS4. So my replacement hard drive is inside the Sony PS4. That was a very simple thing to do. I've got my flash drive connected with the update files, and I've got the power cable connected, so I can push the power button now and get going. And what I'll be doing is just following this guide and just going through the process. This details what you need to do, but it is a relatively straightforward uh, procedure. I've got the flash drive connected, I've got the power connected, I've got my controller connected to the PS4 using the USB cable into the other USB port there, and I've got an HDMI cable going to this monitor, and I've also got Ethernet. Now, I don't actually need Ethernet right now because the installation is coming from the flash drive, but I'm going to be installing other things afterwards and connecting to the internet to check things. So I've got that connected as well. Now the HDMI cable is going to this monitor, but I was hoping to capture all of this here via my Elgato capture card, but I've tried to do it and I can't seem to capture it. So I have this old monitor. So you can see here, cannot start the PS4, connect the DualShock uh, 4 using the USB cable and then press the PlayStation button. So push it here. Connect a USB storage device that contains an update file for reinstallation, version 7.5 or later. Okay. And now we can start the installation process. And it's just going to go through it now. So after about 20 or 30 seconds, it comes up with this, that the PS4 will be initialized and all users and all data will be deleted. Are you sure you want to continue? And simply select yes. And now you can see that it is initializing and it's going to start the whole installation procedure. So you don't have to turn anything off. So it's only about five minutes or so. There's about three or four different screens where it goes from zero to 100% and it tells you that it's, you know, updating software, etc. And then you'll get to this screen and it's just telling me to push the PlayStation button. And that's it. 
I can now go through and set this all up like I did before. And I'm not going to connect my camera because that's downstairs, but I can set this up now. So now I can go through and I can set this up just like it is a new Sony PlayStation 4. Success. We have liftoff. So I've signed into the PlayStation Network and interestingly, the first thing that I asked you is whether you want to transfer data from another PS4. This is not something I'm doing, but if you're going from the PS4 Slim or the PS4 Original to the PS4 Pro, if you've got both PS4s there, you can connect and you can transfer all your data from your old PS4 to your new one. So as far as the installation process goes, there's nothing really else for me to do here because the hard drive has been replaced and as you can see, the operating system has now been installed on the hard drive. Now I took a little bit longer than most people because I've been recording this whole process, but if I had to do this again and I didn't film it, I could have replaced the hard drive, downloaded the installation files to the USB drive and then install all of this easily within 25 to 30 minutes. It really isn't a difficult process. You just have to follow the guides online. Now this isn't how I want my PS4. This is not how I want my home screen. And that's because I've not been able to transfer over my games or my data or anything else like that from the old hard drive. But I'm not at a complete loss because if I go to the store, and obviously I'm signed in at this point, you can see my name down the bottom. All I have to do is go down to my library and I can see that it says I've got two games installed. For some reason it's calling the Playroom a game, okay? But it's installing Call of Duty Modern Warfare. It's going through the installation process because the disc is inside here. So it automatically started installing the game. But you can see down here, there's eight other applications installed and there is 157 games that I've purchased and there's 81 games from being a member of PlayStation Plus. So all of these games are here and I can go through and I can just download all of these games. I'm not going to personally, it's up to you, but I'm not going to go through and download all of these games all at once. When I find that, you know, a fancy game of this in a few days, I'll just start downloading my favorite games and I'll make sure that they are installed. But of course, there's a few things that I haven't did as far as playing games, and that is get my online data. So if you go to the settings area, and with regards to the settings area, I guess it would make sense to go through all of these settings screens again and just make sure you've got the PlayStation 4 set up the way that you want it set up. But what you want to do is go down to application save data management and go to save data in online storage and you'll see an option download to system storage. So I'm just going to select that. So now that's going to download all of my save files, all my save data, which means that for all the games that I played before, I can be back where I was before. So I'm not going to start from level one. And I'm not sure if you can see this, but all the games are there. Call of Duty 28 megabytes, Rocket League, FIFA 20. And you can see all of them here. And it's got a list of all the files, all the games and all the save files for those games. So yeah, I just need to download them all. So you can see there, player profile, save game, download. And now it's downloading my save game from Modern Warfare. And I'll just go through and I'll do that for all the games. I'll need to check there. I'm not sure if there's a save all option. It's been so long since I've done this. Um, but yeah, I just need to download all the save games from online to uh, the storage. In fact, where there should be an option. Select multiple applications. There we go. That's how you do it, guys. I don't need to pick, pick that one. I've done that already. In fact, I'll do it again. So yeah, you do that. Select all. Go to download. And I'm going to have... I'll just overwrite that. I'm going to have all my save games now. Now, I'm going to have the save games for games I've not downloaded yet, but I'm happy with that. I'll go through and I'll be able to download all of those games again, the ones that I play. And I'm sure you're like me, that you download a lot of games, you buy a lot of games, and then you find you're not playing. And, you know, I've only got two terabyte, and games like Call of Duty do take up a huge amount of storage. Warzone and Modern Warfare just take up a ridiculous amount. So I'm going to just be cautious and just download the games that I'm actually going to play. So it took 10 minutes or so for me to download those online save games to the internal drive. But I did notice throughout the whole installation process that the replacement drive was making a lot of noise. There was a lot of spinning going on and the PS4 fans were really kicking in. But I restarted the PS4 and it seems to have fixed the issue. The fans aren't going too crazy, it's a lot cooler and it seems to be operating correctly. 
So what I would say is if you do replace the hard drive and install the PS4 software and you notice any kind of noise or performance issues with the hard drive or the PS4, try a restart. It could be something as simple as a restart that will fix that issue. Now, another thing that you will face is updating game installations that came from disk. So Modern Warfare has been installed, but there is an update file of 100 gigabytes, which I need to download, extract, and install. Now you can start the application without updating. That's always an option, but I can't play online unless I update to the latest version. And there might be bugs and other things in the game as well. So if you're like me, you want to have the latest version of the game. But that is something that you have to bear in mind that when you buy a disc, like the disc version of the game, you're essentially buying the release version of the game. So within months, it's outdated. Sometimes games are outdated as soon as you put it into your computer and you have to download an update file. So if you install your game collection from disk, you might have months or years upon years of updates that you need to install to bring the game up to the latest version. So bear that in mind because when you insert the disk, you will be installing the older version of the game. But of course, at this point, I only have half a game installed, kind of half a game that I've got installed. But over time, I am planning on installing a lot of the games from my game library. Now, if you want, you could just blitz it. Just blitz the whole thing and look at your game library and just download all of your games and update the games in one go. So replace the hard drive, update the software and just download all of your games. Personally, I'm not going to do that. I'd rather just kind of download a couple of games a week. And one of the reasons I want to do that is so that the PS4 is not just constantly updating and installing but also because it allows me to kind of review my collection because if you're like me, you've probably got a lot of games in your collection that you've not played for like two, three, four or more years. So I'd rather have a cleaner hard drive with more storage rather than having games that I'm just not going to play a game. So I'm going to just review the games in my collection and just download a few games a week over the next few weeks until I've got my favourite games installed and then I can just pick and choose what games that I do install. But of course it is up to you. It's up, it's up to you what you want to do. You simply go into your, your game collection, go down to your library, and you just simply select the games that you want to download. But I hope you've en enjoyed this tutorial, guys. Um, there you go. I'll just show you the library scheme. I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial, and I hope it's helped you see how easy it is to replace the hard drive and update the PS4 again, install the operating system again. Now, I'll leave a link to all these pages that I've referenced already, and... My guide to you is use this video tutorial as a companion. My guide to you is if you can, try and fix it with safe mode. If not, if you need to replace the hard drive, follow the steps here about backing up and replacing the hard drive and then follow the guide step by step about downloading the installation file and just follow this to a T, line by line. It's a very, very simple process, but I do hope that this video has helped you in some way. So I hope you've enjoyed the video, guys. But if you get any question, please do leave a comment below. And if I can't help you, maybe I'll be able to point you in the right direction. Until next time, guys, take care.